Willem, can you unmute yourself? Yes, here I am. Thank you, Mona. Uh, because it was a nice bridge because um, I think in the water quality project we work together um, uh, in a general sense, but also on swimming water with the connectivity at the marine terrain. Uh, so maybe if there are questions about the narrowband IoT and the LoRa, uh, those kind of things, just ask them in the chat. Uh, but I've asked you as a, a change uh, to tell something also about the um, sniffing bike project. Because yes, good. Yeah. Let me uh, share my screen and start the presentation. Yeah, then you can. Um, yeah, so uh, I know, thanks for the, uh, the introduction. Um, uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to talk about the, uh, the ECC sensor, um, although it's interesting to mention here that the, uh, the EC sensor uh, took off as a project in uh, 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 the, uh, the next web uh, challenge, the next web IoT challenge two years ago, where Sodak uh, won uh, the, uh, the contest that the, uh, the, the Dutch police actually uh, uh, launched there. And uh, together with, uh, with Vodafone, who was a partner in that project, we developed this EC sensor to run on what at that time was the uh, the brand new uh, Vodafone IoT network. And yeah, see, two years down the line, you see it's uh, it's now being used all over the country. So it was uh, it was a great success. So so thanks to the police again. But we I'm going to talk about the uh, the sniffer bike. Uh, in Dutch we say snuffelfiets. Um, it's uh, uh, like everything else that we're doing at Soda, we make. Uh, uh, autonomous, often mobile sensing stations. And in this case, it is a device that attaches to the handlebars of a bicycle. The project uh, was started uh, by, uh, uh, as an initiative of the, uh, the province of Utrecht. So the province of Utrecht uh, approached us and uh, Civity, a company from, uh, from Zeist that is uh, uh, highly involved in all sorts of uh, uh, data platforms, uh, to jointly uh, develop a, uh, a solution whereby people, when cycling, measure the, uh, the air quality. In an early stage uh, of this project, the uh, RIVM uh, was involved as well. So there's, there's another link uh, between uh, SODAC and, uh, and RIVM there. Uh, and RIVM uh, is uh, mainly involved in, in, in uh, validating and, and checking the, uh, the quality of the data that we are uh, gathering in this project. So this, this, uh, this project started around the same time as our uh, EC sensing uh, project started and is still in, uh, in full swing. What we are trying to do is uh, make the invisible visible, of course. Uh, the, when you're cycling, you don't know what the air quality uh, around you is. And, and uh, we believe that uh, instead of uh, having just a few static points where you measure air quality, it would be nice to measure the air quality exactly where you want to know about the air quality. So if you attach it to a bicycle, you can get the data that tells us what the air quality is in the places where people cycle. Um, so far, we've produced uh, 700 of these uh, units and uh, yeah, they've been uh, used uh, and, and are still being used uh, uh, quite extensively all over the place. Uh, RFM is on top of, uh, of the data that we're producing and this data is, uh, is visualized on uh, the Snufferfeeds uh, website. Uh, so if you go to snuffelfeeds.nl, you can uh, see uh, the, uh, the, the nice uh, map that Civity has produced that shows the, uh, the air quality in the areas where, uh, where people has, are, uh, are using the device. And uh, it, even uh, after a long time using this, we still have a lot of active cyclists. Every day there are at least 100 people on the road uh, collecting uh, data. So, so uh, that it, it uh, exceeds uh, all the expectations that we ever had. So, these devices, they, uh, they uh, initially were made to, uh, to measure the, uh, the dust particles. PM2.5 is, uh, is what they uh, are focusing on. It also measures PM10, the, uh, the somewhat coarser dust uh, par particles. And we combine these readings with the exact position of where the bicycle is. So we have a, a constant uh, GPS running. We measure the, uh, the air quality every uh, uh, 10 seconds and every two minutes. Uh, we, uh, we combine tw 12 uh, uh, data readings and send that uh, over narrowband IoT up to the cloud where this data is being stored. We, we, we don't just measure the, uh, the dust uh, particles, but also temperature, humidity, air pressure. Uh, of course, with the GPS uh, clock, we, we also have a very accurate time reading of when we measured it. 
We constantly monitor the voltage of the inbuilt battery. The device runs, uh, it, it's, a, it's a low power device. It means that it can be used for about eight hours of cycling. So if you uh, cycle an hour a day, it's, it's uh, roughly uh, needs a recharge once every week. Uh, and we also measure uh, the volatile uh, organic compound and, uh, and we, we measure the, uh, the accelerometer uh, uh, impact. So if, if the, uh, the road that you're cycling is fairly rough, uh, this can also be uh, distilled from the data that we send to the cloud. So, it, so there's a whole lot of data that we, uh, we send from a single device that is attached to the handlebars of your bicycle. It has a, a fast uh, connection mechanism that's actually uh, uh, taken from these uh, GoPro cameras. Uh, so that uh, if you park your bike somewhere, you can uh, detach the device uh, to make sure that it doesn't get stolen when your bicycle is parked. Now, uh, successes. Uh, for us, it was a great success in the collaboration with, with uh, Civity to make something that uh, publicly shows uh, the data. Uh, the data is available publicly and it's also, uh, uh, for instance, sent to uh, REVM to, uh, to further process and, and use and can be used by basically anyone that wants to have access to this, this data. Um, the good thing about uh, not just showing the data, but also making people cycle around with such a device, is that it creates a lot of awareness. Awareness about the air quality. Uh, people that cycle with a device, uh, of course, get a stimulus uh, because they are using it themselves, but it also triggers a lot of discussion and talks about it. So everywhere where these people go, uh, to talking about air quality is, is a sort of a standard uh, subject then, and which, which we believe is really good. It's really good to, uh, to create this kind of uh, awareness. Um, the project uh, was actually uh, meant to, to end uh, this summer, but uh, the province uh, extended the project now for another year because of its, uh, its great success. So we're, we're happy that we can uh, continue measuring in, uh, in the province of Utrecht and we still uh, hope that, uh, that other provinces will take over this initiative and, uh, and, and that we can uh, make and distribute more of these units uh, uh, in the country. It so far has created a great sense of community. Uh, we, we've got people that, uh, that go out together cycling and, uh, uh, or some people that, that are really, uh, really mapping out certain areas where they, uh, they really want to see what, how the air quality changes uh, over time. Um, so so, so th th this was a good side effect of, uh, of making this device. Um, the, the data showed both on a, a dashboard app and on a mobile app that has been created by Civity. So nice, uh, nice access to the data. Now, uh, at the moment, of course, there is a bit of a decline in cycling uh, because of the Corona situation. Less people go to work, so there's less commuting. So we've seen that, uh, that the, the, indeed the usage has gone down a bit. Um, the devices are still quite expensive with uh, any IoT device that you produce, the more you make, the cheaper it gets. That is uh, uh, a given uh, fact. Uh, the, the, the point is, is that we, we see IoT devices really become uh, cheap when the, the numbers exceed, let's say, 10,000 and more. And uh, with this uh, sniffer bike, we still produce them in batches of around 100. So that means that, that uh, um, the, the, the cost is still high. And hopefully that, that if this really picks up, for instance, if other provinces uh, would also uh, uh, adopt this project and we, we strongly believe that the, the price could be reduced significantly. Uh, we do need to recharge the device every hour. I, I personally don't see that much as much of a disadvantage. Um, we looked into possibilities of solar charging etc but uh, that would work if you leave the, the device on your bicycle when you park it but yeah, we, we, we made it uh, detachable to prevent theft of the device. So that, that is a bit of a, uh, let's say, uh, opposite effect of, of uh, being capable of solar charging it. Um, in the early version, uh, we had some user-friendly issue, uh, friendliness issue. Uh, for instance, first generation, the, uh, the U USB connector for charging was a bit flimsy and people were struggling to put the cable in correctly. And sometimes they left it overnight and it wasn't charging. So we made some, some major improvements um, there. Now, um, the opportunity for us is uh, yeah, to, to boost this, uh, uh, this recreative cycling and, and make uh, other cycling groups uh, take the device with them, explore areas where we uh, haven't been yet. Uh, for instance, we, we've been looking at uh, uh, bicycle uh, uh, challenges, racing events, etc. Um, the other opportunities for us lie in the international expansion. We started this in Holland, but it, 
at the moment there's already uh, six or seven hundred other countries where uh, we have active devices particularly in uh, in Scandinavia they're very active we started in, in Germany UK um, Spain so, so that there is uh, a, a potential for this to expand uh, on a more global uh, uh, scale yeah, for us the, the, the fact that uh, uh, citizen science is really in uh, uh, so so it's a fashionable thing to do uh, so we believe that with this rise in popularity of citizen uh, science uh, the uh, attention for our uh, sniffer bike will also go up and we also started uh, with some of these uh, courier services uh, that are uh, delivering uh, for instance green speed here in Hilversum uh, we did a test with and I, I think that is a, a very good uh, partnership that you can have if, if all these uh, courier and uh, food delivery bikes etc start using this device we also uh, increase uh, the the number of data points point significantly now uh, challenges we see here is uh, um, international network coverage. We make use of uh, narrowband IoT, which is not available in all countries yet. Narrowband IoT at the moment is being used in some uh, 60 countries. So, so we, are, we are still have a long way to go for a, a true uh, global uh, coverage. Uh, we can also run it on LTEM, but LTEM is even fewer countries. There's only about 30 countries that have this. Um, but we believe this will quickly change because in a few years, all the 2G networks will be phased out and uh, people will be forced to go to this, uh, uh, this newer generation network. So we, so we expect that in the next two to three years, uh, the expansion of narrowband I IoT and uh, LTEM will, uh, will definitely continue at a great pace. Um, well, the, the question that, uh, that people are asking us all the time is, is like, what is the real uh, value of the data that we're collecting uh, and then then one of the the, uh, the the questions that drives from there as well is is what is then the monetary value so like if we're cycling around and we're collecting data we have a device that costs at the moment 250 euro how do you justify this from the uh, amount of data that you're collecting and that is uh, an, an ongoing discussions that we have uh, the province of Utrecht has uh, been very uh, happily uh, subsidizing this project but for instance, we're looking at like what would, would people be prepared to pay for it for having such a device themselves. And, and uh, yeah, we, we see that nobody is prepared to pay 250 euro just for a gadget on your bicycle. But let's say if, if the price would come down below 100 euro mark, uh, we see that, that people might be interested to, uh, to just own the device instead of having it on loan of one of the uh, uh, municipalities. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, the question is, how can we make the device more inter interactive? Uh, uh, that's, that's a bit of a struggle as well. In the beginning, we had uh, different colors of LEDs flashing. And then we saw that it took so much attention of the people that they weren't paying attention to the road anymore. So you need to be really uh, subtle in, uh, in interactivity uh, that you provide with your device. Now, the future, we, uh, we, we started the design of a, uh, a new version of the sniffer bike and uh, this has been in, in collaboration with the uh, Delft University of Technology. Uh, they came up with some, uh, some amazing ideas and concept to, uh, to make the device even nicer. Um, so here you see the, uh, the first uh, images of, uh, of that, uh, that new design that we, uh, we're hoping uh, uh, to launch in the near future. Um, it's, it's way smaller, so I was personally uh, quite amazed that uh, the same technology could actually uh, fit into uh, an enclosure that is about half the, uh, the size uh, of what it is now. Uh, it looks way more attractive, whether that is a real bonus or not, I'm not sure, because if it looks attractive then again the, the chances of theft uh, are, uh, are also becoming higher. Um, but particularly the mounting is, is way more uh, initiative. Uh, it is a sort of a click on thing so that the, the black bracket that goes around the handlebars of your bike will remain there and you click the device onto that bracket. And that, that's, that's a really cool, uh, cool thing. And um, it, we, we do have some, some LEDs now to, the, to indicate uh, both the battery status and the, uh, the PM two and a half uh, data. So you see a bit of an orange uh, stripe on the top of the device that is uh, that is indicating the air quality while cycling. So we, we try to find the, uh, the best balance between information that we can provide to the user and, uh, and not uh, taking too much attention uh, of the, uh, the actual uh, cycling. Now, like it stated here, uh, we hope to launch this new device in the first quarter of 2021. 
but it depends a bit on, uh, on who's buying into it. If, if we can have another province on board that says, yeah, we want to do something similar like you did with, with Utrecht, then this is, uh, this is definitely a go for us. So, so we're ready for it, but yeah, it's, it's all depending on the financing. When I look at the questions, so, so, Jan yeah. Willem. Sorry? The, when the I look questions at yet? The... I didn't have a look at the questions yet. No, you no, no, but I just, I just wanted to say that when I look at the questions, there's no uh, shortage of um, volunteers. That, well, that, that, that is uh, something that we experienced uh, throughout uh, the project. So uh, yeah. finding people that want to go cycling with... <laughs> Uh, already... uh, yeah, but, but uh, uh, contact us because uh, let's say if initiative starts in, for instance, the, uh, the city or uh, area that you live, then we can contact you as one of the, uh, the first ones to, to get one of these devices. So, so feel free to send us an email and we put you on the list. I'm thinking, um, uh, uh, yeah, that we just want to start. <laughs> if I look at all the, there's a lot of... Um, uh, comments. Maybe you can also take a look yourself. A lot of enthusiasm and um, several comments are about the charging, uh, like using uh, the Dynamo, which we used for the lights uh, uh, yeah. on the bikes or the e-bikes uh, use their power. Um, so there's a lot of uh, yeah. ideas about charging while cycling. Yeah, indeed. We, uh, we've gone through, uh, through many of these uh, concepts already. Um, one of the drawbacks of, let's say, the, the, uh, the dynamo, the, uh, the, the charging that most of the bicycles already have, is that there's not much uh, standardization in it. So some are alternating current, some are uh, DC, uh, different voltages. Um, so, so we couldn't write, uh, come right to a, to a standard. But uh, we have been interfacing the device to, uh, to several uh, electrical bike types. And, and that's, of course, uh, much easier because then, then you have a good, consistent quality of, uh, of energy. And uh, uh, we developed a, uh, a proof of concept with a bike sharing organization in Zwolle, the Zwolle Deelfiets. So we nicely integrated it in the frame of the bicycle. So, that, so there are uh, lots of possibilities. Uh, so anybody that is interesting or has an idea where uh, we could uh, integrate it in any other project, we, we are keen. Okay. So people can also co-work on uh, participate on the project. Absolutely. From citizen science per perspective. Yeah. Great. Um, then there's, of course, a lot of people who want the... <laughs> I, I want it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also wondering why not also um, we have Frank who's walking the Peter Pot, uh, would like to uh, put it in his uh, backpack. Um, so yeah, I that, that's a really nice idea. And of course, a lot of other people mentioned this uh, to us as well. Um, what I like about, uh, let's say, if you're long distance walking, you can have a backpack and the backpack could have a nice solar panel on top. So you, you solve the, uh, the charging issue uh, straight away. Um, so, yeah, that is, uh, that is all uh, a possibility that yeah, we, we, uh, we didn't really follow up yet. But uh, I, I, I see that happening if the demand is high enough. Okay. Um, then there's still other, one question of myself. Uh, the, the data, is it real-time available on the website? No. Yeah, the, 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 the platform uh, that RFEM, sorry, that uh, Civity made is, uh, is real-time. Yeah. And, and, and what, uh, what they did is to, uh, to ensure the, uh, the privacy of the people cycling. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, they cut off the first uh, five or ten minutes when you start cycling and they cut off the last part. So you don't see uh, yeah, where you started and where you went yeah. to. But yeah. the, the part in the middle is... Uh, is shown uh, online. Of course, for the, uh, uh, the cyclist himself, in the app that you can run on your smartphone, you will see your whole uh, itinerary. Okay. And um, uh, you said it's on the Civity site. It's not connected to the air quality site of the RIVM? I th I well, the, the, the data goes to the RIVM. But the, the, the Sama Meta, I believe it uh, was the site, mm -hmm. is uh, showing the data of the, uh, the static uh, air quality sensors that the, uh, the RFEM has with the citizen science uh, in various places in Holland. Okay. Because this is, this is really very dynamic, so it doesn't really fit into that framework. But uh, RFEM is, is dealing with this, uh, this data and they are cleaning up the data in what they call a, a wasstraat uh, in Dutch. 
so a cleaning line for the data and uh, it, uh, it yeah the, the 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 quality is is uh, for let's say the, the 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 price of of what the device costs or what the sensors cost the quality is is really good okay i have Maybe an idea Sorry. Hi, I'm Elma. I'm from also from the RIVM Hi. and I'm from the Samameter platform. And we also do have the bike information on the website, but we make an aggregation of it. So we don't show the real time points, but we make an hourly based um, average of it. Okay, you thank you. You combine okay. it, can have um, uh, to check it with uh, static sensors. Yeah. Glad you joined. So this, if, if the if people have other questions about the Sama Meta platform, they can also um, uh, ask them. Um, there is also a, a nice question is from Joop Appels uh, on uh, crowdfunding. We yeah. we have we have indeed been looking into uh, to crowdfunding. So it, it's still one of the the things that we are uh, taking into consideration. Depends a bit on on how other projects with uh, with other. Uh, uh, local governments are taking off, but if, if that's not materializing, then uh, a Kickstarter campaign uh, would be a great idea. You know that Sodak did a few Kickstarter campaigns in the past, so we, we're quite experienced in this. And, and yes, very smart it, in it. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 and therefore, uh, like especially with the new looks, it, it, it looks really appealing. So, a Kickstarter could indeed work very, very well. I would like to suggest um, that people, uh, uh, because uh, this is a little bit uh, the end of the evening uh, also and um, uh, instead of me uh, looking into the chat uh, please take the liberty to unmute your phone and also discuss things a little bit more than it's not anymore and like Oren um, uh, is asking about the bare minimum of sensors yeah just ask your question um, yourself feel free everyone to make this a nice interactive um, event. Oh, hello, yeah. I, I, I wanted to ask to understand more what is the sensor because what I had in mind is every rider has a mobile phone and if uh, you have a Bluetooth connected to this device then at least this problem is solved. So what what is the yeah. Components that must be there for measuring air quality. Yeah, it's, it's a very good suggestion uh, that indeed you could uh, make a device that is uh, a lot cheaper if you uh, cut out the, uh, the communication uh, component. Um, the, the minimum that you require is of course the, uh, the, dust, the dust sensor, the PM sensor. And I can tell you the PM sensor that we are using is made by a Swiss uh, sensor manufacturer called Sensilion. Uh, so you can Google that. It's the SPS 30. Uh, so so it, it is, uh, let's say, in this market segment where you see a lot of uh, uh, Chinese uh, sensors basically uh, dominating the market. Um, this is the one from, uh, from a very well-known and, uh, and recognized uh, sensor manufacturer, and that's why we've chosen it. Well, not just because of the name and reputation of the company, but it's also the smallest PM sensor in the market. Yeah, but but the idea of, of, of pairing that with a Bluetooth and, and then sending the data through a phone is, is actually a very good idea. And do you need to calibrate it uh, often? Uh, it's, a self it's a self-calibrating sensor and it's uh, one of the things that you have with, uh, with dust sensors is that over time uh, they may, let's say, uh, pollute, pick up with the dust that they've been collecting while measuring. So this sensor has an, uh, an automatic cleaning function. Uh, so w once every so often, they make the inbuilt ventilator spin at a much higher rate to basically blow out all the, uh, the, the dust that it has collected. So it, it is, it is uh, technically speaking, one of the fanciest uh, PM sensors in that uh, uh, price segment. So, any other questions? Because what I would like to suggest is, um, Edwin and I already have been talking about wanting to do something with air quality again, because also the city of Amsterdam is starting a program. Um, so if people want to participate, wherever you are, uh, I think we should we could look into this uh, as an alternative um, and see if we can collaborate and start uh, a project and also 
uh, look for funding. Um, well, I am on Meetup, <laughs> so just send me a, a message on, on Meetup if you want to uh, uh, participate. Um, no more questions about this. Anything you want to share still, uh, Jan Willem? No, the, 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 it's just that uh, Eric made a bit of a, a typo there. It's not the SPDS, but SPS 30 is the, uh, the sensor. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm sending this to you. Yeah, uh, Bradley. The SPS 30 sensor. Yeah. yeah. Kijk. Yeah. That's, that's the one. Mattia, that's uh, <laughs> pretty. Um, I had one request uh, for this evening also uh, from um, someone working with uh, um, nature conserving people, how do you call it? Boswachters <laughs> uh, in the Netherlands uh, because um, of more pollution but also um, uh, crowds um, coming to the... Um, uh, the uh, looking for na going into nature more uh, because of the COVID and uh, he wanted to pitch but I don't see him present yet in the meetup of, uh, anymore in front of Italy. but I'm just dropping to you guys he wanted to know uh, ideas about how to sense uh, how many people are uh, available of are um, present in nature parks And I don't think that's a difficult question because uh, like you, Jan, uh, but also Jan Willem, um, uh, Tom van Arman, there's a lot of cheap technology uh, like with Laura that we can use for that. So what I'm going to do is I will also um, have a chat with him at the end of this week to see if we can uh, connect the people uh, who want to help um, start some pilots in this area so uh, anyone in uh, maybe maybe but uh, i have uh, some suggestions there we, we've been looking into how, how do you put something up in the forest yeah. and, and and one of the ideas that one of my uh, my colleagues had is um it, 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 it's in a, in a forest you can easily uh, put a little birdhouse a vogelkooitje vogelhuisje a birdhouse against the tree uh that doesn't look suspicious so people won't steal it or or won't uh, damage it because they might think that there is a bird in there. So you can use that birdhouse to put all your sensors inside and you could use the roof of the birdhouse if you put it high enough in the tree uh, to, to put two little solar panels there. So you can have a fully autonomous uh, sensing solution in the forest that doesn't look suspicious. So that might be an, uh, an idea for the sense makers. And of course, it has been done in the, in the sense makers community uh, uh, already a, a, a people counter or a presence counter on uh, on basis of uh, an ESP32. I think that, that technology uh, is, uh, is available off the shelf. So uh, take that technology, put it in a little birdhouse, put it in the forest and, uh, and you're in business. That's a very interesting one because uh, we don't need... Uh... Uh, Ola and Avi. Sorry? You can your tanden gaan poetsen, gaan ze lezen. Arno, wil je mij ook voorlezen? Ja, heel snel dan. I'm <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> slap tijd. Um, well, let me just um, because I, I uh, uh, let's just have a, a small uh, chat continuing this, uh, Jan Willem. Uh, but let me just for all the others who just want to leave, feel free to leave. Um, thank you for joining, um, and uh, we'll stay on line for a while if you want to chat or dive into. Uh, certain complex issues. Um, so thanks a lot. Thanks Jan Willem. Uh, and now that the official part is over Jan Willem, uh, yep. what, what would you suggest? Because um, I know, I don't know if Jelmer is still present, that also in the Uiterwaarde, um, they're looking into from how can we measure um, uh, crowds in, a, in an effective way. And you yeah. don't always have trees, I think, around. Yeah, but so, so measuring crowds, that is typically done by just uh, measuring the, uh, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signals from the smartphones. That is that's by far the, uh, the easiest and cheapest way to, uh, to, to count people. Uh, these days, everybody is carrying his phone. Uh, most people don't switch off their, uh, their Wi-Fi uh, when, when they're wandering around. So the, the phone 
will be broadcasting Wi-Fi signal all the time, and that can be used uh, by by any device that can receive Wi-Fi to count uh, count people. Yeah. Okay. Can anyone else who wants to share something? Yeah, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Um, I was a question um, about how you measure the PM because it seems to me that if there is a lot of wind flow, it will dramatically change uh, your measurements. And if you're uh, measuring uh, on front of your bike or at the back, if you're biking hard or if your bike is soft, is this windy or if the wind with you or isn't that wind really affecting your measurements? Well, initially we were quite concerned that the, uh, the measurements would not be uh, very consistent uh, for the reasons that you just mentioned, because it's, it's a moving, uh, moving object. Uh, but then uh, what we see now is that uh, on any given day, when you have 100 or 200 uh, cyclists on the road, um, the, the results of the data that these bikes are measuring is really quite comparable. So in a day that the air quality is poor, you see that on all bikes the air quality is poor. And if the air quality is good on the day, you see on all of the bikes the air quality is good. So, so it, it seems that the, the, the moving, the cycling and the wind effect is, uh, is not as, as, as bad as, uh, as one might expect. And is it also in comparison with fixed um, stations? Or is it more relative? Did you say well, the absolute value we should not use, but the relative value is usable? Yeah. Yeah, well, the, the, the data of the, uh, the bikes is compared with the fixed stations as well. That is one of the things, for instance, that the RIVM is, uh, is, is looking into. And, and yeah. we see that again, we, we, we see the same similarity there again. Ah, cool. And then in which location are you measuring? Is that, is that a fixed location on the bike? Is that uh, facing downwards or within the wind? Or The, 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 the air inlets come from below. Yeah. So, so there's, there's two, uh, an air inlet and an air uh, exit uh, on the bottom side of the device so it, uh, uh, to make sure that the wind is, doesn't get pushed in because of the, uh, the, 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 the wind force of, of the cycle uh, moving. Yeah. So, so it, it, it's, it's with a little ventilator sucked in from the bottom of the device. Okay, thanks. Um, the Laura Pex counter is gone out. Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. There's also another suggestion in the chat on the Pex counter from Arnoud. Um, even kijken. Any, uh, anything else people want to share? Rob, you are muted. Rob is not. Before you want to share something? No. Then I think we'll finish up. The people I see are. <laughs> well, oh, great, Manon. Thanks for having us. It was yeah. uh, was a pleasure pleasure being here. Thanks. Thank you as well. And then everyone enjoy your evening. <laughs>